Hello people and welcome or welcome back to News Review. Hopefully everyone managed to get everything they wanted from the Jojo collab as we step towards the Chinese New Year. If you are a new returning player, I do recommend you check out my new player guide. It'll help you better understand what I'm saying in the video. This is going to be a long one, so open up the patch notes, link in the description if you want to follow along. Additionally, I'm trying a new thing where I buy a guild stage for every 10 subscribers I hit, which will give you a diamond if it's your first time clearing it. Thank you so much for 400 subscribers. I'll try and time it so the guild stage will be uh, open pretty much like when this video is uploaded. The next milestone will be at 410 subscribers, so subscribe and also join the guild code in the description if you want to participate in that. I'll also be announcing what I do on my Discord server, so hop in there if you want to be updated as well. Alright, let's get right into the new content. The character will be prior released this upcoming week is Chiel. As is usual, he'll be making a return in the seal as well. In his own seal right here in the New Year's Black Gold Specials 2 drawing machine, DX with Knuckles. Um, but I don't particularly recommend specifically pulling for him since there will be a new Chinese New Year card introduced uh, in the week after, I believe. But if you already happen to have him, this is a pretty good upgrade. Uh, for his leader skill, it's similar to uh, his pre-PR form, where you can just have any members, uh, but he's incentivized to have at least uh, two attributes just to get that uh, times 2.2 instead of the times 1.8, uh, and his damage scales with the number of runestones dissolved. Moving on to his team skills, uh, if you look at the news, like Matt had messed up this description, uh, which is a bro moment, but... Uh, when six or more combos are made, team attack times 2.5. Uh, clear negative state of electrified, frozen, weakened, lock for recovery, petrified, condensed, and explosive bomb runestones touch while moving and turn them into enchanted god runestones. Uh, damage to you from burning and scorching areas will be converted to HP recovery. Uh, record this version of runestones upon the completion of runestone movement. The first batch uh, of sky drop will be enchanted god runestones of the recorded distribution. This is the same as before. Where basically uh, the board remembers what it was right before you dissolve it and the skyjot will be the same thing uh fire runestones have the effect of all runestones and all runestones have 150 percent effect of fire runestones meaning that uh fire runestones are just you know more powerful i guess because they have 150 percent effect of themselves as well i'm not sure how that stacks uh god runestones also possess the effect of all race runestones and uh trio's damage will ignore uh, specific damage using resistance which is any kind of shield with a percentage on it and initial shield he also gets a boosted active but i'll go over that later right after i go over the uh, base level active or the base form and uh, lastly, when the last movement ends in a column below a trio, you fully recover HP. This all means is necessary. Uh, when he is just in the team, he also has a special form, uh, a berserk mode that can be triggered when either you touch a burning or scorching area, uh, or you dissolve 30 or more fire runestones cumulatively. Um, in the berserk mode, when I say it like that, in the Berserk mode, uh, his attack times 3. Uh, he can overpower water enemies, ignore defense, and upon his skill activation, each member launches one non tributive attack after attack, as much as 1.5 times team attack to enemies. So, this is actually a fairly unique uh, kind of functionality he provides to the team, um, where non tributive attack can just straight up ignore some shields. Uh, and this being an after attack means that it is a sig significant amount of damage. For his active, I'm just going to show it in full since it includes descriptions of all the possible boards to choose from. It is CD8. Uh, restore all crack positions. The character enters a tempestuous state for one round. I don't know why they keep on making up these new states. This state is basically... Well, it says right there. It's just attack times five. I don't know why they have to keep making new states. Um, tap one of the board setups to remove all runestones and generate enchanted god runestones according to the setup. You have four setups, either water, fire, earth, five attributes and heart, light, dark, and heart, or five attributes and heart. Um, for the boosted version of the active that he gets when he is the leader and ally, uh, he additionally removes enclosed areas for one round, uh, which allows Skyjop to actually take effect. 
uh, which is especially relevant for him because he records your board and sky drops it. Uh, and the tempestuous state will be entered for two rounds instead of one. And at the end, he also reduces his own CD by two, allowing faster cycling. Uh, moving on, TOS has reached its 11th anniversary and all players will get a large amount of rewards, which includes uh, 22 diamonds, 11 stamina potions, uh, 1 set of essence soul stones, 11 million coins, 5,000 souls, 30 golden man head slabs, 500 orbs, 100 for each attribute, 1 rainbow summon coupon, 1 silver summon coupon, 1 new anniversary cake bubble, 1 all max ticket, which I'll talk more about later. Uh, this list can also be found in the celebration event section if you didn't catch all of that. And there will also be a ton of bonus stage giving a variety of resources. Those I will not name in full in this video right now because that would actually take way too long. Uh, you can go take a look if you're interested or you can just play the stages as they come. They're not really relevant to know in advance. And moving on, we have a new coalitional contest, which will last for four weeks and have two new characters associated, which e with each character being there for half the event. I believe last time something like this was on was in JJK, where you chose which school you wanted to sign with. And similar to that event, you also get to choose your adjutant upon starting the event, uh, where each adjutant will give you slightly different skills. You can choose between Napoleon and Una and Nala. Uh, the first new event card is the uh, Dark Human Began, whose skill I show, will show in full once again because it's rather unique. Uh, it's CD4, turn the column below the character into Enchanted Light, Dark, and Heart of Fixed Numbers and Fixed Positions. For one round, team recovery becomes zero. Uh, for each step may deduct 1% of team HP, bottom out at 1, and lower team HP after removes the moon, the higher the character's attack to the max times 3.5. There have been uh, technically two, but really one dark human in the past who can reduce recovery to zero. It was a collab character and the TOS OC version of that character, which is why I say not really two. So this is, uh, this is the first proper dark human card to uh, reduce the recovery to zero. Uh, this card is rather special as he has his own dragonware that enables him to switch and transform into a new card. This is really rare for uh, a free card. The switch skill is CD8 and initially explodes the whole board to generate resources the same as the column below the character. I don't know why this is worded this way. I think it's just the columns are, same, are the same as the attribute below the character. But if it's not, you know, I guess we'll see. Exploding the board is just good uh, either way. Uh, the new card that he turns over into uh, Taishin is a Light God, making him one of the few cards in the game that changes race and attribute upon transforming. Uh, in this form, he has two actives, uh, which use EP now. The first one is EP4 for one of each that may recover 1% HP until team HP is full. The higher the team HP after the moon, the higher the character's attack. The max times 3.5, which is the opposite of uh, what the base level active was. And for his second active, it is EP8. Uh, clears negative effect of black and white zone, restore all cracked positions, restore all runes to the normal state, turn all runestones into enchanted god runestones, and for one round the character attack times 6, can't overpower enemies, ignore defense, and combo count plus 8. Uh, this is the second ever light god card to re restore cracked after Aiden, but it's still really good since it's unconditional and you can put it in any team. Although, you know, as I said before the changing race and attribute might make it hard to slot in a team that doesn't accommodate for uh you know one or the other uh the dragon itself is actually not bad uh it gives cd minus four upon entry meaning that uh, b guy can activate his initial active right away and transform in just four rounds provided that nothing else messes with that it also gives a times 1.8 attack boost upon active skill activation, which is quite high for a single Dragonware skill. Uh, next up, we have a new ultimate card, a Fire Dragon Hei Jia Jia. Uh, this is CD7. Uh, clear the hypnosized state of the Dragon Leader and Hei Jia Jia members. Uh, can be activated regardless of hypnosis. If there are three or more Hei Jia Jia members on the team, the character skill CD minus two. Turn heart into runes of the members' attributes. And for one round, ignore sticky, burning, and smog. Add the number of combos made in the first batch to the total combo count in the round. And for every extra Hage member or dragon in the team, the combos will be added times two to the max times six for five Hage members or dragons in the team. Uh, this can lead to, I suppose, an insane amount of combos because it's multiplicative. Um, but I don't know if you would necessarily even need that. Perhaps for something insane like the 33 combo 
the field that has appeared in the past. Uh, but apart from that, this card isn't really that useful. I don't see its use rate being that high, but more potential dragon members uh, just existing certainly does not hurt. Following that, we have a new Fire Demon bi-weekly card, Cindermoth. Uh, this is CD6. Um, the neighboring demons enter a frenzy, stay for one round, explode water, earth, light, and dark, generate demon fire and demon heart. For one round, by dissolving all present fire and heart in the first batch, at the end of the round, turn all roads into 15 fire and 15 heart. Uh, I would say this card is unique for the 15 fire and 15 heart stuff, but I don't see it being used too often uh, since, you know, you do just reduce the board to fire and heart maybe for something like um the equal combo shield and not that sort of equal combo shield but where you have to dissolve only one uh attribute or like of like five combos that was in the do nightmare stage um and having a board purely consisting of one kind of runestone and a heart which can be freely used in that sort of shield might come in handy but as I said, I don't really see it being used too often because hopefully that sort of shield does not come up that often. Moving on once again, we have the new Asteria seals. For this year, there will be silver and gold Asteria, which are analogous to the blue and red Asteria of the previous seals, respectively. The gold Asteria seal will contain a new collection of cards that you can get, as well as a brand new gold Asteria jackpot. I'll be putting out a video reviewing the seal shortly, so look forward to that. For now, let's go over the gold Asteria jackpot. The jackpot is a uh, Hitomi Tsukishida, a light human. Um, for her leader seal, team attack times 9, HP recovery times 1.7, humans get attack times 4.5 additionally, and HP times 1.7 additionally. Bodies of a human runestone, human attack times 1.7 additionally, heart and runestones of the human's attributes also possess 50% effect of light, and light and dark damage receive minus 50%. This seems pretty solid, especially in the HP department, because you'll have 1.7 multiplier uh, twice. Um, and if you use her as an ally, you'll get that twice again, which can lead to a uh, pretty insane HP in conjunction with the team skill, which I'll talk about uh, actually right now. Uh, for her team skill, when she is the leader, uh, your ally can be anyone. Well, any human, really, to make the leader work. Um, Extend your movement time regardless by 2 seconds. Human skill CD is minus 7 after entering a stage. Light runestones also possess the effect of all runestones. Uh, modify the runestone touch while moving to become human runestones, so human trail. After resolving runestones, the first batch of runestones will be dropped in the columns below. Humans will be enchanted light human runestones. When an enemy is defeated by initial direct damage or attack damage, uh, the card enters a frenzied state for one round, which is basically a worse hyper state. It gives the attack boost, but doesn't uh, stop any other negative effects being put on the card. Uh, if she is in a hyper fatigue or frenzy state, burning and sticky will be nullified. And for every seven light runes that dissolve, the leader launches one extra non-distributed attack and one extra attack of each specified attribute. Water, fire, earth, light, dark, and light again, uh, totaling seven extra attacks uh, for every seven light runes that dissolve. So the max 49 extra attacks will be launched for 49 light runes that dissolve. I don't know where you're dissolving 49 light rune stones of uh, that because that's like an awful lot but um this is possibly like the single most amount of attacks a card can do and that is really funny to say because we just had the jojo collab um she also has a team skill uh, when she is a member in a full human team uh humans all stats times 1.7 and by ending the last runes movement with the character moves of herself in a column the corresponding member skill cd minus one and ep plus one uh overall i think this is a pretty insane card already where it has a good base team skills and the human uh, member pool is certainly diverse enough to break whatever shield you happen to need to break uh but that's not all for her active this is where it gets like actually really unique uh it is cd7 uh ignore runestones in disguise for one round this is something that no other card has ignored in the past remove laser trap for one round uh, she enters a frenzy state for two rounds and for one round uh ignore electrified runestones absorb the first attack damage uh this is super damage reduction absorb the first attack damage of anything regardless of you know whatever launch seven light counter attacks of 1000 times the absorbed attack uh, ignoring defense and enchanted runestone shield and if she is in a frenzy state this skill stays in play this is basically diamond but better 
Uh, and if you're not aware of what that means, I predict that this card will be getting used really, really often because this is super damage reduction that potentially can last over two rounds. This is two rounds at base, but in the future, if there is some way to like give cards frenzy state, well, there is sort of a way to give cards frenzy state, but I think the only meaningful one, uh, at least recently, has been like Azathoth, but he only gives frenzy states to dragons. So if some like human card gives frenzy state to other cards, this card I, I predict just like will scale with that, and that that could be insane. But even without that, if she is a leader and you just keep on defeating enemies, this skill will not run out. You will have super damage reduction just for good, which is pretty nuts. Uh, for the last new card, we have a Battle Pass card, which is an Earth God Zeus, uh, CD6. Explode Heart and Runestones of the character's weakness attribute. Nice typo there. One round after dissolving runestones, all dropping runestones of the character's attribute will be adjacent. And for each runestone of the character's attribute dissolved, combo count plus 2 to the max plus 24. Other uh, special thing about this card is that it can synchronize its attribute with the leader if the uh, leader and ally are both gods, which is also why the active skill is written like that. Uh, we're done with the new cards but not with the new content there will be three new chronon cards getting added to the game through it two of them being one star and one of them being three stars um the book which is the right one here absolutely sucks so i'm not even going to talk about that uh ingrid's one allows a character to ignore equal calmo shield which is mildly useful since that shield is becoming more common as time goes on and the Pompeii one is uh the three star one is really good since it allows a character to launch 20 extra fire attacks and ignore puzzle shield and initial shield uh that last one will definitely uh be a great one to grab when it becomes available uh furthermore there will be skill buffs for enoch troy and all the uh, keepers of transmigration uh this is mainly just tweaking multipliers but also many of the active skill cds of the keepers of transmigration got reduced which is quite nice just enabling them to uh, you know activate faster all the transmigration stages will also be returning one after another so it's a good chance to grab these cards if you weren't able to in the past all of them are pretty useful to us uh, varying degrees some of them are used all the time some of them not so much uh and as always there will be a new monthly challenge where i'll hopefully upload videos on a little early this time around but no guarantees and lastly, there is a new Dragonware Forge from an Evoking Coin Shop card, this time being an Earth Human Exclusive Dragonware Forge 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 from Floris. Uh, the skills are just okay. Nothing really that special. But, you know, forge it if you have an extra copy from uh, the previous time that it was refreshed. For my ranking of, well... This is just trivial. I predict he'll be somewhere in the top, probably not worth 200 right out the gate, just by how the cards like are designed. Uh, but probably still usable for a while if you have him and happen to power release him right uh, as the right has it's being introduced. For ranking of the free cards, I think that uh, Beacon is a really unique card. I put him near the top. Uh, I think it provides great utility, great sort of uniqueness, although maybe I should put him lower just for uh, the hassle that he'll bring for if you want to put him in a team that like is not rainbow. Uh, hey Jaja is pretty good, um, but I don't see that like ubiquitous. But I just put her in mid tier because dragons generally suck and we need more good dragon cards. Uh, the uh, butterfly or whatever the heck this card's called. The fire demon here. Uh, I put him in low tier because I don't think it's really that good. Uh, there are plenty of demon members that are probably better. Uh, and for the gold asteria, it's almost unfair to put it on the same tier. And that's why I just like hold it right out of the uh, tier list this is just this is on the level of like something you would pay for with diamonds you're not getting this card day one unless you're insanely lucky um but you know if you like or rather when you get your hands on this card this will be really good and lastly uh zeus is just kind of there he exists i don't foresee him being that good 
Uh, for the celebration events this week, there will be a ton of log rewards for various reasons and returning black gold seals as well. Uh, once again, I recommend you use your diamonds on the new cards that are upcoming instead, since they are almost guaranteed to be better than these older cards. Uh, the returning ultimate card this time is the 11th seal boss, Manessis, which is a very useful card that has bronzed evolution into many different races, so try and get enough copies to have one of every form. Fittingly, I think you need to have minimum 11 copies to evolve into uh, all of its forms. And finally, there will be a new All Max event, which is slightly different to how they did in previous years. For this year, the ticket can just be claimed right away, and you can choose a single character directly out of the 376 available characters. For more information, you can go to the specific links on the official website. But I, what I will say is, please do not use it immediately. There's a new pair of uh, black golds on the horizon and certain cards might become a better pick because of them and once again you might randomly get cards out of the pool while pulling for something else, eliminating them as your potential choices. I will try and do another video anal analyzing the all max uh, pool as well, but I'm really not sure when that will come out so uh, no promises. Uh, in addition to that, there will be a draw giveaway which is another opportunity for you to get more cards. The website isn't quite open yet, but I will put the link in the description and the website should tell you the specific instructions for how to participate when the time comes. Okay, that was a lot. Uh, that's it for this week's news review. Leave a like if you liked it, comment below if you're the same to me, and subscribe to the links in general. It really helps the channel out, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!